Are you struggling to get the perfect lighting when it comes to your food photography? Are your food photos just looking a little bit flat? Now, if that's the case, keep watching because I'm sharing three easy lighting techniques to help you create beautiful, natural looking and crisp light that will really make your food images pop. This is Sukena and welcome back to my YouTube channel, the best place for food bloggers, food photographers, and content creators to improve their food photography and also make money from it. Now, today's video is all about lighting techniques. Lighting can really make or break your food photography image and it really does not matter if you have stellar food styling, beautiful props, and creative editing because if your lighting's bad, you're just gonna end up with a mediocre image. So let's jump straight into three lighting techniques to nail your food photography. Now, my first tip is to use only one light source. That's it, you heard it first here. So whether you're using artificial light or natural light, using only one light source will really give you the most natural looking light that's free of any light pollution. I'd say 90% of my work uses only one light source. And it's really only when I'm doing any commercial photography that I would introduce a second or third light. So if you're working in a space that has more than one window, I highly recommend that you block off any additional windows. Now, the reason you want to do this is that a second light source will likely reflect light back onto your set and it fills up any shadows. And this can often lead to flat looking images that lack depth. Secondary light sources also cause a lot of light pollution on your set because you've got light bouncing all over the place. And there's always a time and place for second light sources, but really for the majority of the time, one light source is more than enough. So this leads me really nicely into my second tip, which is all about the use of reflectors when it comes to food photography. Now, I commonly see so many food bloggers and photographers using reflectors on the opposite side of their light source. And this is basically to reduce the amount of shadows. And today I want to tell you to stop doing that all the time. Okay, so this might be an unpopular opinion, but constantly using reflectors to bounce more light into your image is so overused in food photography because what you're essentially doing is getting rid of any shadows that are present in your image. Now, in order to craft interesting light that really helps to create depth and contrast in your images, you really need to embrace shadows. And that's also the case when it comes to light, bright, and airy photos. A little bit of shadow in your images is necessary to stop your food looking like it's actually flying in the air, even if you're attempting the light, airy look. It's the shadows that give the food its 3D quality. So consider using your reflector sparingly and only when you really need it. Have a look at this example of bun cake that I shot using artificial light. Now, my light source is coming in from the right-hand side and I took two shots of this bun cake. The first one is using a reflector on the opposite side, so on the left-hand side, to bounce light back onto my set and on my cake. And this really helps to eliminate any shadows and light fall off. Now in the second image, I didn't use any reflector and you can see there's a gradual light fall off as you go from one side to the other side and you get some darker shadows. Now, whilst there's no right or wrong in food photography, it's all about preferences. And my preference is definitely the second image without the use of a reflector. I just feel it gives the image more depth, more contrast and a stronger focus on the actual food. Now, my last tip for you to really nail your lighting when it comes to food photography is the position of your light source. Side lighting or back lighting are really the best places to place your light source in relation to your food. The worst thing you can do for food photography is to use a light source that's coming in from in front of the food. This just leads to really flat looking food with shadows that are facing the wrong way. And oftentimes you also end up blocking the light because you as a photographer or the camera is in the way of the light. So really you wanna avoid front lighting at all costs and focus on placing your light source either to the side of the food or behind the food. So I'd love for you to comment below and tell me what are your biggest struggles when it comes to lighting for your food photography? I would love to help out and help you resolve them. Now, if you've enjoyed the tips in this video, then you are going to love my 18 lessons guide, which gives you actionable tips to level up your food photography from how to use your equipment better, lighting tips, all the way through to composition and editing. So make sure you download 
download that using the link in the description box below as well as in the comment box. So I'll be back next week with a video all about making sure that your images are super sharp. So if you've ever had any problems with your images being blurred or lacking clarity, then stay tuned for next week's video. And then you'll also love this video I made all about how to nail dark and moody food photography. So if that's something you've been struggling with lately, then make sure you check this video out as well. And make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe to keep up to date with all my new videos. You can also find me on Instagram every day at learn.food. I'll see you next week.